Welcome to GarCast, home of all manly media. Hello and welcome to GarCast. Today we're here to talk about horror films. And we got all of them. We got Niche, we got Schlock, we got B, we got everything. And the whole round is here. And that is Ali. Hey. Boris. We're gonna discuss every horror movie in existence. All of them. And Tom. <laughs> I hope we don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> it's like we can get through them. Twelve at most. So yeah, uh, we can start with uh, the immediate schlock or with the art house ones. <laughs> which which one do we go? What's on? So brand? I, I watched this little indie horror movie. It's called Avengers Endgame. It's not. It's not very well known. <laughs> It was really interesting how the hero of the story, Ant-Man, decided to recreate the ending of, of Bad Taste, Peter Jackson's classic horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> Including lawnmower and everything? No, no, it's the chainsaw through the ass thing. Oh yeah, that's, that one. Uh, yeah, but I don't think anyone's seen that one, so, you know. Let's move the discussion to something more popular, but also in a similar vein, being a, a superhero <laughs> horror movie. <laughs> exactly. And that is a good old Faust from Brian Usner from 2000? Yep. 2000. Yeah. Faust, Love of the Damned yeah. is, is the full title. Just to. <laughs> so you don't accidentally watch like an actual movie based on the Faust legend. <laughs> or watch some theater adaptation or something. What, watch some fucking <laughs> Kino, dudes. Ah, uh, yeah. No, but before this, I sat down and I wondered, uh, what would it look like if you turned New Metal into a movie? Uh, it turns out this is it. This is 100% it. You don't get anything <laughs> different. Did you ever... <laughs> Ever Pretty watch much. a new metal music video and you were like, man, I wish this was 90 minutes long. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Boy, do I have the movie for you. Um, yeah, so, of course, uh, I think we, we can go into the story a little bit. Uh, Faust, the like, classic uh, theater uh, piece by Gunnar Goethe. Uh, is normal normally a uh, I, I'm 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 good at explaining. <laughs> this. Uh, is about a guy called Faust who makes a deal with the devil, who says, "I can give you everything you want, all the power, and I can totally make you turn bad." And he says, "Haha, I won't." And of course, everything goes bad. But that's <laughs> uh, the uh, the general gist of it. Um, so uh, it doesn't have that much in common, like all of the philosophy and God talking. No, no, this is just uh, a guy makes deal with devil to get power and all goes downhill. He gets deal with the devil so to the only thing get like that's... superhero powers, which essentially in this case is like wobbly arm blades. Oh, and, and wobbly <laughs> horns. Don't forget the wobbly horns. It's all, it's all kind of wobbly and rubbery. <laughs> And the, the very thin nylon cape, please, that you can actually see light through. <laughs> Did you ever wish to, like, see a devil man in, in real real life and have him be all <laughs> wobbly, dude? Here you go. It's your chance. It's him. Exactly. We have, uh, I think he isn't even called Faust, it's just uh, dude, J John, Johnny? John? John Jaspers. Uh, who? John Jaspers. <laughs> there we go. Um, who uh, d d wants to jump off a bridge because he had bad things happening to him, most notably uh, his girlfriend uh, being killed. And yeah, he wants to jump down. And then suddenly behind him, one blonde old guy shows up and goes, Ah ha ha. Uh, you don't want to jump down here because I can give you powers for your revenge. And he basically talks him out of it in like less than a minute. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> it's it's really a thing. <laughs> and your revenge is gonna be you get your wobbly rubber <laughs> arm blades that really wobble in every shot, especially in close-ups that are supposed to look cool. 
Then our, our hero just like straight up goes to hell and fights a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> the skeleton is doing something to him. We don't know. But he fights it's it. It's a weird long calcium boy. With, with <laughs> an extremely long yeah. boy. Yeah, and uh, he goes through a whole transformation that makes him powerful and gives him revenge. Although he already gets revenge in like two minutes afterwards. And then he's like, the devil goes, ha ha ha, you're, you're my tool now. Uh, and so he sometimes turns into a devil man with, with a lot of rubber <laughs> on it, stuck to his forehead. And this, this way too thin nylon cape that I just cannot deal with. Like capes are supposed to be cool, but it's just like it's it's so flimsy. It's just it's just this thing of Come nothing. Come on, it's supposed to be like like skin texture or something, I guess. Like he has demon wings or some <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. but it's like an island cape. <laughs> mm-hmm. I- I'm glad Elena is really going into like the plot of this movie because I don't fucking know where to start with this one. Oh, I, by the <laughs> end, I was just sort of sitting back, just letting it wash over me i don't think it really matters plot all too much <laughs> oh yeah i lost the thread of the plot as well because that was just sort of based on the novel theater piece that every german has to read in school including me <laughs> and then the rest what of the it just fuck? is uh does that does the classic novel also end with like a big snake demon fight and like a, a like I don't know, whatever the fuck it was. A guy T-posing in the air, (laughs) screaming down at the rubber devil man. (laughs) Yeah. Is that what the novel does? Yeah, the... The the novel uh, written in, I don't know, 1700 something, uh, did not include rubber blades. uh, but, But a lot of philosophical questions about power and stuff that were not discussed in the film. I want to see Goethe in like old and German describe what a T pose is. <laughs> <laughs> and so the man did come forward in the shape of a letter. <laughs> and the letter T. was a T. So, yeah, you're getting. Uh, also, this is just. Uh, the, the basic rundown of the story is just. Devil goes. does bad things. Uh. And his minions or his girlfriend or whoever the other people around him as uh, also do stuff, and then uh, Devil Man or Faust comes in and wants to kill them all. And uh, what we didn't talk about yet is the style because the style it's shot in just <laughs> oozes this two thousand feel of we need to do swooshy it cuts. It feels like a new new and... middle music video, <laughs> like like Boris said before. <laughs> Is this the yeah, most like these leaves, 2000 like... movie? Remember that scene where a guy punches someone and there's like 36 cuts for the punch? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that scene where, where oh, the yeah, woman and... turns into a tit puddle? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. If, yeah, if you guys... th- th- that was something I wanted to yeah, talk about. If you about. guys start like retweeting inflation or like war fetish art onto my timeline, I know exactly where it came from. <laughs> Faust is to blame. <laughs> Faust popularized it. Yeah, because the, the, the devil or Mephistopheles or just M, because it's cooler, so he's just called M in the story, uh, punishes uh, one of his female subordinates uh, by making her melt into a puddle. The problem is uh, that this puddle then only consists out of um, breasts and the bottoms. Like basically just uh, a four clove leaf of round on the floor with like teensy tiny wiggly maybe, arms. Maybe melting is not the and you just look at correct it. term. It's like her tits and ass just inflate to take over the entire body and the face is sitting in the middle of it yeah that's yeah. true it's a, a very inflationy pony listen as man. well and you just look at I, it i can't claim that i've ever seen a similar scene in another movie so this is oh. breaking new ground <laughs> Putting your niche fetishes on the big screen, the film. Brian Usner, you did it, you absolute madman. 
I, I hope uh, Disney, the cowards, how are you to direct, like, I don't know, fucking Guardians of the Galaxy movie or some shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those scenes that just sticks out, because as Tom said, uh, there's just sometimes a point where it just starts washing over you because you're just, oh, okay, this is happening now. But this scene, <laughs> it just stands out because it just comes so out of left field. And you just think to yourself, mm, yes, <laughs> somebody definitely jerked <laughs> off to this. Somebody is jerking off to this as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> we see you over there. Me, personally, I was only jerking off to the scene of the skeleton choking Mr. John Jaspers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a degenerate. Please. Yeah, so if you want a, a really good time with uh, a film that you can probably watch with all uh, friends together and just want that really good feel of 2000s new metal, <laughs> uh, then you got some Faust for you. Do, do you want a soundtrack by... If you want to watch a movie from the mind of a 14-year-old that's somehow been working in horror for about 15 years <laughs> prior to this, <laughs> then yeah, this is probably it. A 50-year-old, 14-year-old. <laughs> that makes for a very nice light novel title <laughs> uh, it was uh, I watched this in the perfect environment which was with my girlfriend and we were both kind of drunk and like every single scene in this movie is, is kind of confusing and kind of bad and kind of baffling and kind of really fantastic all at the same time it's all like just happening at the same time Oh yeah, we didn't include the acting, which uh, can go to high, high levels of ham <laughs> and camp, especially when he is in his devil man form. Oh boy. Which is just an onslaught of one-liners. Do you remember that scene where like the main female character of the movie admits that she fell in love with the main ma- character on like first sight, but then like... The, ma- the first scene that they met in, he's just like a raving lunatic riding with blood on the wall. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> There's a lot of out-of-context things that I could just say about this movie, and a lot of out-of-context things I could just make up, and, like, there's no way to tell the difference. <laughs> I honestly might believe you on some of them. I've never seen the movie. You've seen it like two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta accept it at a certain point and roll with the punches. <laughs> Should we go to the other one that we, I think, all of us have seen? Hmm? Uh, Is, uh, we, uh, we had uh, the idea of uh, good old Suspiria. Yeah. I've seen Suspiria. I haven't seen the new one, though, yet. I've only seen the old one. I've seen the new one. I saw the old one a long time ago. Okay, uh, because for me it's uh, very fresh because I just watched it uh, earlier today. Both <laughs> of them. just watched it half an hour ago. <laughs> was a very good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just finished the, the, the remake half an hour ago. You were like... I, uh, I'm, including the time we have been I gotta finish the movie quick so I can record the podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is really what happened. Um, yeah, because a good old Suspiria um, that I can tell a little something about, um, because it is the old one that being from 1977 is uh, a so-called giallo film, meaning it is an Italian horror film from the 70s, and giallo means yellow. Because the um, little pulp novels back in the day in Italy were had yellow jackets. So uh, it means something pulpy. Um, and it was a special brand of horror films that were really uh, had a signature style of being very heavy on color, aesthetics, fashion, uh, architecture, and just being very, very artsy uh, in their presentation. So this is like a whole subgenre of, let's say, European horror films, 70s it- uh, Italy. And yeah, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of predominantly uh, black love killer movies, typically. 
There is yeah. there is some like debate whether Suspiria counts because the um, supernatural elements so prominent um, mm-hmm. and Giallo tend to be more crime oriented, like uh, more terror horror um, than like supernatural unexplained stuff. But um, I mean, like Argento did both in his time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, exactly. So in, in most Jalo films, you will have the murder either wearing black gloves or being clad in completely black clothing, um, which is a, sort of a stylistic choice to not tell which person it is. Sort of like in De- Detective Conan, where like every murder is always m- murderer is always um, depicted as like a completely uh, detailless uh, like black sort of stick figure person mm. you can imagine it that way so you cannot see wh- who the person was uh, so you cannot figure it out yourself just by the visuals so yeah good old Suspiria uh, uh, holy hell <laughs> uh, will you it's look at all of those colors <laughs> and all <laughs> of those aesthetics I mean woof. Uh, I watched the version that was available on my Amazon Prime, and I don't know if it's already the restorated version. I think there was a 4K uh, restoration recently. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't watched it on Amazon. Um, it might be. There. Yeah, because just oof, oh yeah, yeah, this this looks really good. I think for even just aesthetic purposes, of this really grand colors, and just all of the architecture. And fashion, you can just add, you can just indulge and lavish in that. I mean, good luck. Have spent most of your budget on lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I think this movie got like a Blu-ray release recently in Germany, and then like it's already sold out. Like it's not in stock anymore on Amazon. So great. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Could have made it made it slightly yeah, less is... limited, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely something you can imagine, like on Blu-ray, looking fantastic. I think I I wrote a few things down over here that I have. So uh, we haven't talked about the story yet. It's a very simple story, essentially. It's a young girl from America who comes uh, to Germany of all places. It doesn't take place in Italy. Uh, to join a dancing school, a very famous one, and but soon as she arrives, like in the rain and everything is awful, she sees that nothing doesn't seem to be as it seems. Like girls seem to be dying or disappearing. Uh, they are just strange people. Everybody is just not normal. And then sees that something is going on in the backgrounds, and uh, they investigate the girls, and then all of it goes downhill. Uh, isn't like the first murder in the old Suspiria someone getting like stabbed right in the heart? Um, like, yeah, not not through the yeah. chest, like hard ex- exposed heart, and getting stabbed right into it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the first. <laughs> That's that's yeah, fucking hardcore. It, it, it's one, just yeah, that that whole entire scene is just one one way to start a film. <laughs> it's yeah, it, it, just it doesn't sort of like hold back until Mm-mm. later on. In fact, I think some of the kills later on are more subdued than that. Like they they tend to be they're, they're some of them are quite distressing. Like, there's the one with the dog that is barely seen. Oh, there's yeah. the um. The bit with the like barbed wire or like razor wire. Mm-hmm. Oh that yeah, that is, was is hard really to watch. uncomfortable. But like, it's not mm-hmm. as excessive as the, the the opening kill. Uh, I don't remember which one is the dog. It's the guy like outside. Um, I can't remember the plot of this beer. If <laughs> like me, um, it's it's the guy it's outside the, the, pianist. the school. Yeah, uh, the pianist um, uh, has like a a blind dog. And the yes, rock always yeah. stays outside, and then one of the I think the kid of one of the teachers uh, just walks by, and then you just see people being very excited, and she runs up and says, "Yo, a dog bit our little kid," and it just happened off screen. Huh. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm thinking of like the dog thing in um, what's the other Italian movie, uh, Beyond something. 
Uh, uh, what, the Beyond? Uh, yeah, the, is it the Beyond? Just the Beyond? Yeah. yeah. The, okay, well, yeah. yeah. The really <laughs> grotesque one, yeah. I'm getting those confused. That <laughs> one's got some kills. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lucio Fulci is a, a very different director. <laughs> His films are very out there. I guess we should also mention, like, the dubbing in it, because of how Italian films were shot, that they were all dubbed in post. So, like, there's there's no, re- uh, like, real language, like, no no true, like, correct um, language for it, because it's all dubbed okay. in post. Like, actors would speak their native language when they were filming, which sounds so bizarre, but that's just how they did it, and then they dubbed it in, like, English, Italian, all that, in post. So that's why, like, if you watch... Suspiria is an example of it, but there are, there are some other examples where, like, you're never sure you're listening to the right audio track if you have it on Blu-ray or something. <laughs> like, there, there are some real bad examples of ADR. Um, I watched earlier this year um, Absurd by Joe D'Amato and, like, The Child. There's a young boy in it, and he is voiced by a clearly grown woman and you can tell it's a shrill, grown woman, <laughs> and it is—it's—it's it's painful to listen to. Isn't it like that? The Italian movies were shot completely without any sound, and then they just they add the sound effects as well in post. Yes, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's all completely like ADR in post. It's—it's <laughs> oh, it's such a bizarre way to make films, but that's just how they did it, and it really does add to the really creepy nature yeah, yeah. of them. It really like, does. It, if you want to be unsettled, like, and everything feel just out of place, that is the way to do it, I guess. It's to make sure there's no natural yeah. sound. I don't know if that's how they intended it. I just it, noticed but... the, the soundtrack is so... Oh, yeah, the, the Goblin soundtrack oh, yeah. is, is fantastic. And it so is loud, so especially. Creepy. Just an onslaught of sound coming at you, because you think, oh, horror films are going to be, like, subdued and... Just the little noises. Oh no! It just comes at you with a, a wave of drums, and it's so unsettling. It's really good. Isn't it like a psychedelic rock band or whatever it was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the like quote unquote sequel to Suspiria Inferno um, that has a score by Keith Emerson, uh, so like Emerson Lake and Palmer, and it is oh. it's such a weird change of pace. <laughs> it's still good, but like after Goblin soundtrack that is just weird having this like prog rock soundtrack to a film that's pretty similar to Suspiria is really weird oh yeah uh, I'd also written down here um, I just really liked the uh, protagonist which uh, is like this very innocent looking girl but she's such an expression full face especially Mm. her eyes that you can really sometimes see that oh, the, yeah. the, like, the the oh shit oh shit oh shit yeah. uh, going through her eyes or just the doubt you could just basically the the the, the bottom prompt from from LA Noir just next to her face just doubt I really liked her she she makes for a great protagonist for this uh, sort of story did you notice yeah. her reappearing in the remake because mm-hmm. I sure didn't but it was like mentioned in the Red Letter Media review, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, I guess." <laughs> uh, she, oh, maybe. She, she, I think I could imagine. She, there's one shot. She, she's she's like a cameo appearance. She's uh, uh, the wife of the old man. Oh yeah, I yeah. thought of her. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. But we're gonna get to that later. Mm. So yeah, uh, also what I found uh, really interesting in Suspiria is that the fan service was practically non-existent. I thought for a 1970s yeah, it's definitely film, one of the, the uh, least horny Italian film I've seen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which says a lot because like Suspiria isn't exactly peachy clean, but like, it's, it's it's it holds back at least. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've just seen one woman in a bikini, and the rest is just long dresses and like long bathing suits and a lot of <laughs> suits and really snazzy looking stuff. So, uh, if you want your fashion porn, then you definitely got that. The point is, this movie looks and sounds really good. It, st- it still holds yeah. up perfectly even today. Yeah, and also the ending is just oof. It's it's very <laughs> sudden. 
Yeah. The way the movie ends. <laughs> he is all of the ending. Have He's, fun. Uh, I, like the marketing for that like if you look at old marketing for that film like they marketed the last sort of like i think 10 minutes as the scariest thing you'll ever see and it's it's kind of funny <laughs> like just how insane yeah. it is like that i'm pretty sure the marketing was good. like like the only thing scarier than suspiria is the last 10 minutes or like or something like the other way around like the previous 90 or whatever the film is <laughs> it's <laughs> Even even then, they were on the this is the scariest movie you've ever seen <laughs> bullshit. Even back in the day. I think they, they played like uh, the teaser trailer in the the Red Letter Media review that I watched. Um, which is like really short and it has like that like the font for the, the movie's logo, which is just like pulsing organs or whatever forming the word Suspiria. That was that was mm-hmm. a weird one. Nice. And, and like uh, the teaser trailer doesn't contain any scenes from the movie. It's just like a spooky skeleton in a wig or whatever turning around, and then the font. <laughs> it, it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> gotta include more more spooky skeletons in modern horror movies. That's why they suck. <laughs> <laughs> Make your own skeleton movie. Come on. How hard can it be? I'll... We all have calcium boys inside of us. <laughs> it can easily I'll make, make one. a horror movie about the scariest story ever, which is that one furry guy making like a puppet out of a human skeleton. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, that's yeah. Thing. Fuck. oh god! <laughs> hey, enjoy that like memory. <laughs> oh yeah! Uh, regarding the dubbing uh, that you mentioned earlier, Ellie. Um, what I found interesting is because sadly Amazon only had the German dubbed version mm-hmm. uh, of it, so I thought, yeah, I just already paid three euros, I'm just going to watch it now. And it included uh, a prologue that was just dubbed over the credits uh, in German, where it says, ah, and here is uh, our protagonist, Hamler Lum, who arrives in Munich, which mm-hmm. I found interesting because normally uh, the film takes place in Freiburg. But right. uh, the German version is uh, changed to Munich. And if you watch it, it actually makes sense because it was shot in Munich. And I think any German could probably tell you, oh, okay, that, that, that's Munich, that's, that's not Freiburg. Like uh, all the uh, like car signs are Munich. Uh, I think, as I have been in Munich, I think I recognize the, um, the one like pub where the people dance on the tables as I think the Hofbräuhaus in Munich. And the uh, this big space where our blind guy with his uh, dog goes, I think, is also in Munich. It felt very, like, uh, heavy Bavarian. So, yeah, uh, it makes sense that the, the dub just changed that. <laughs> you can watch this movie set in Germany, filmed by Italians and dubbed in English. <laughs> <laughs> also, boy, does that remake not make a secret out of which city it's set in ah uh, no because <laughs> uh suspiria from 2018 uh takes place in berlin which is also tied heavily into the plot that uh it takes place during the what's called, what was called back then the german autumn um which had terrorist attacks from the raf uh, which were um like the, the whole bader meinhof uh, thing you can probably read this up but it was like a very dark time in like German history. So uh, it had like terror attacks and bombs going off. And there was a terrible case of a hostage taking of a whole plane, which lasted five days, um, which also went into German history. So it just in this very heavy time, uh, Suspiria takes place and that just makes everything even more heavy. Uh, but it's just not that. that. That's just happening in the background. Uh, because, uh, oh boy, uh, Suspiria 2018, that, that goes places. Did you know that the dance school in like, Suspiria is like right in front of the Berlin Wall? Like right in front of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember seeing it there. It's just 10 meters away, it's just poof. <laughs> There's the wall. Did you, did you watch the original Suspiria and you were thinking like, boy, this could use some fucking heavy political under overtones (laughs) 
<laughs> Absolutely. Because you got it in this one. The new one yeah. focuses way more on like the dance school stuff, doesn't it? Than the, There's the original. Yeah, actually the more version. choreographed dancing yep. in, in that one. Which yeah. It, yeah. Like, there's barely any of... dancing in the in like the original for a dance school. It's there's like one dance. There's class. like a, a so full performance it. that's like later in the movie. It's pretty cool to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks really good, and it's not uh, like classical ballet, like the um, old one, but it's, uh, just the modern dance. Style, it's like very which expressive. I think fits the story a lot better. Like it's very expressive dancing. And good old Tilda Swinton. Is girl, in it. girl, Tilda, Tilda Swinton's in in this movie in every fucking role. Tilda, Tilda Swinton plays every character. <laughs> yeah. Did Did you know, Elena, that Tilda Swinton plays the old man? Yeah, that I only noticed because the uh, like German dub voice gave it sort of away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was like, is is this, <laughs> is this Tilda Swinton? Is, is Did you not... know that Tilda, like, Tilda oh, yeah. Swinton Jeez. plays the weird goblin creature at the end? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, 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 that too. Well, one of the one of the main witches, like the really fucked up one. That's also Tilda Swinton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you spoiled the film. <laughs> yeah, but uh, oh boy, uh, it really goes into places. I, uh, at first, I, I, it took a little bit of warming up for me for this film, uh, because you just come from this like heavy, atmospheric opera-style color of uh, 1970s, 80s, and then you're just thrown into grey Germany. I, I mean, grey in the sense of it's raining the whole uh, time. It's just not pretty. This is an interesting approach to remaking a movie where you just make a completely the opposite of what the original movie was, in a, in every damn way. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. Nope, and it works. It, it still kind of works. Um, I'll say, yeah, yeah. Big Both. fucking spoiler: the Suspiria is about witches. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, except that the uh, remake doesn't uh, make that a spoiler. Like it happens in the first yeah, five that's, minutes. Yeah, that's that it's explained another to one you. of those things where it just goes goes the completely opposite direction. Where like the original one really takes a while to get there, and this one is just right right away. Here you go, witches and uh-huh. their politics or whatever. <laughs> And like where the original yeah, one and that was, makes the whole thing. Yeah, uh, 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 where the original one was really colorful, this one is gray and drab constantly. And where the original one was was yeah. not not really fucking political at all, this one has a lot of it. And <laughs> where the original one was was a pretty uh, short and brisk pace, this one is two and a half fucking hours long. <laughs> it was longer than I expected, uh, definitely. But uh, I think that this slow burn of this film also makes it really worth it, because uh, it comes at you with like violent stuff and uh, some of it really graphic. Uh, in Suspiria, and just hits you like a truck, and you think like, oh god, it's just oh boy. Because also the dancing is uh, built into the story a lot more, um, because it's really essential to the plot. And uh, horror scenes with dancing, including like body horror, there's a lot of ouch. There's, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of potential. Um, uh, and they lose it really, really well. Yeah, where b- both Suspirias do not fuck around with uh, the first kill in the movie in very different ways. Oh no! This one's uh, long and elaborate and pretty hardcore. <laughs> Absolutely, and oh yeah, uh, the um, aesthetics of the remake are again completely different. Uh, that everything is grey, yes, but it has sort of this washed-out glamour. I feel um, you, it takes place in the in this dance hall that you can feel has this sort of um, what's it called Art Deco. 1920s, like Warring 20s style, but just dirty and uh, on fallen down and sort of broken in places. And that really adds something like this sort of very clean cut style, especially in this dance uh, hall that uh, has a fantastic floor, as well as these very prismatic mirrors around the walls. 
So um, again, it uses architecture completely differently, but also very effectively. I know that um, the director, um, uh, I can't pronounce his name, Luca Guadagino, um, he's had the rights for Suspiria since like 2008, Ooh. but there were problems getting it made for quite a few years, like studios didn't want to do it, and like, it, it's kind of bizarre that like the last film he made was Call Me By Your Name, like a really like kind of melodramatic gay drama, and then the next film he's going to make is like the sequel <laughs> to that, so right in between is Suspiria. <laughs> Oh, I didn't you then. It's just this this sandwich of Call Me By Your Name and Suspiria right in the middle. You know what? I just realized I realized that uh, the director of this movie is Italian as well. And you know what else got a, a, a dub in Italian mm-hmm. back in the day? Fist of the North Star. And you wouldn't believe it, but it comes <laughs> up in a new one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene later in the movie where it just turns into Fist of the North Star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. With the way the violence un- unfolds, this, uh, at least. Yep. I was not prepared for the ending of. Oh, this that film. scene is fucking great. Uh, th- yes. That, yeah. that scene is great, but the uh, movie also has a lot of other scenes. A lot of other scenes. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's the icing on the cake. It's the cherry on top of the end. You think, okay, a lot of hardcore stuff has happened. And then the film just rolls its head and says, "Uh uh-uh, we got some more. And oof, there we go. (laughs) It's it's really good. Uh, I was generally (laughs) impressed. Uh, Not many films, or especially horror films, can make me exclaim, holy shit, out loud. But yeah, that one definitely did. What what's the what's the, the uh, verdict think, on Suspiria? Which one do you like more, Elena? Hmm, I think difficult. But ah, uh, I I, mm, I I'm not sure if I like the original more simply for the aesthetic and but because it's just such a, a condensed uh, experience. Basically, you're ninety minutes and you're entertained the whole way through. While I think the uh, remake takes just a little while to get running, but when it runs, it runs. Uh, I think I think so, my main criticism against the remake hmm. is that it's just uh, there is definitely some fat to be trimmed here. Um, it goes yeah, on l- for a long time for a movie where I, by the end I still didn't feel like I knew the characters that well. Um, yeah, that's but true. It's it, it might be something that it, I'll. It, uh, Maybe I'll appreciate more on a rewatch. Um, yeah. Yeah, that uh, I felt the original. Yeah, as you mentioned it, um, I felt it had too big of a cast introduced too fast. Uh, I think uh, when she, uh, the the new dance student, just comes in, you see a a graphic on the wall where you see all the names and all the photos. And, but shows it for like two seconds. And I think this is where the film thought, okay, there, there are all the characters, off we go. And I think it was just a little bit too fast. And also I thought the old man character, the doctor, sometimes takes a little bit too away from the dance company. I think if it was just all dance company condensed. I think it would have been a little bit better. But of course you need a sort of outside character who un- wants to uncover this mystery. But I think it took a little bit away uh, sometimes from the intensity. They like uh, tried to weave that entire exposition thing in more elegantly than the original did. Because uh, that one is mm-hmm. just the character shows up and gives the exposition and then disappears never to be seen again. In the original, <laughs> uh, the, a character yeah. played by Udo Kier. And, and in the new one... Oh, it was Udo Kier. I was wondering if it was him. I thought it was him. Yeah, you're very young Udo Kier. Yeah, and 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 the new one just like gives uh, a lot a lot of focus to that character. And yeah, mm-hmm. your mileage may vary on on how much you think that was necessary, but whatever. I also don't don't know what the what the reasoning was for the creative decision to make Tilda Swinton play the old man. Did she just Want to do it? Did uh, they want to want to save money? Uh, the, 
is it something <laughs> to do with the theme of the movie of like matriarchy so we gotta have the male characters played by a woman too I don't know <laughs> uh, don't know she, she just I think it has some sort of theme going on she, uh, Tilda Swinton Suspiria ca- has themes there we go ca- came on set and she was like I'm about to go fucking in put me in, in makeup for <laughs> 16 hours every day yeah maybe uh, uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting movie. People who liked uh, the yeah, original uh, should watch this one as well. Absolutely. And uh, for modern horror films and what you can just do, uh, I think Suspiria is also very worth it. I think I'd, I wrote some films down, to, but I don't know if everybody else has seen them. That's the problem. You could just do the... We'll you can just do anyway. the ranting yeah. and raving that you often do. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for 15 minutes of I liked this thing. What did you like? I'm just going <laughs> to... Sorry. Uh, I, I can... I, I'm just going to do uh, a quick fire um, recommendation for two films. Uh, two foreign films that I'm not sure if people have seen or will see, but please uh, watch them. Um, one of them uh, is called Control, like uh, Control, um, from 2003, and it's a Hungarian f- uh, film, um, uh, which uh, was quite uh, successful. I think it even ran in Cannes or something. Um, got a lot of... Um, awards uh, and for Hungarian cinema uh, it's not that often that something comes out um, it was in 2003 and uh, takes place in the subway it's a film about um, the subway control uh, guys and takes place in some sort of Slavic dystopian future uh, where the subway is just one of the main things to get around sort of not sort of like metro but uh, like everything is just underground and everybody is depressed and sometimes even funny things happen in this depression. So it's it's a mix of uh, comedy and thriller with a little bit of horror um, sprinkled into it because a killer is on the loose. And how do we find a killer in the subways? So yeah, I just want to uh, throw this one out because I found the Blu-ray of this film uh, in the one euro oh. shop. So like, oh. The, the, uh, how, how did you come here? I watched it before and was like, hey, uh, didn't see you around here. And now I own this on Blu-ray for a euro. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but uh, there it That's, is now. That's uh, interesting. Is this written with K, like Control, like like in Mortal Kombat? Yeah. With, yeah, with, with a K, K and two mm-hmm. L's. All right. Yeah, exactly. This is, uh, yeah. Control. Mortal Kombat writing. Mm-hmm. In the true style. Uh, and yeah, I found this one to be uh, a, a very fun uh, thing. Like uh, you get a good mix of like comedy and and horror. I think I remember just the whole montage of all the subway control guys going to the psychiatrist, and all of them have different stories to tell. Uh, and just one is sillier than the other, so that was a really good time. Uh, so if you want your Slav subway uh, cinema, uh, there we go. Uh, and the other one that I think I have been raving about, but uh, rewatched two days ago. Uh, basically, I just wanted to watch it and thought, oh, okay, I'm just going to watch it a little bit longer. And then, oops, it was two o'clock in the morning. Um, it was Requiem. Um, like uh, the uh, death music piece, the Requiem, from 2006, um, a German film. Uh, and German horror is not that common. Like we, uh, Germany doesn't have a lot of, uh, let's say, genre cinema like fantasy, sci-fi, and horror. Um, and why is this interesting? Because it's an exorcist film and based on the real, uh, like exorcist story that also the uh, like American exorcist films are based on, which was an exorcism that happened back in Bavaria. And this is like the German uh, version and retelling of said story. And I just I really liked it because it takes place in the 70s. It's Bavaria, again, uh, just really backcountry of a girl who has epilepsy and wants to go to university. And she thinks that she, see, she sees demons. 
and uh, yeah, goes into a whole like religious um, spiral downwards. Uh, what I really liked about that is because the pastor or the, the priest is the voice of reason in this film. Because she just comes to the church and, see, and she says, uh, I see demons, um, I have voices speaking to me, I need God to help me. And the priest just goes, yo, what you need is psychotherapy. Uh, you have epilepsy, my girl. Uh, th this is just metaphors, you know, just demons don't speak to you. And then she gets very agitated and says, yo, no, you're a man of God, how can you talk like that? And then uh, everything just goes bad. It's just one of these really slow, creeping social horrors that just, in the end, sort of explodes. Not like Suspiria. I think it, there is, there's not a single special effect in this film. It has like a very uh, documentary style to there's, it. Just, you just see everything from the outside. There's no exploding heads. But it's... Oof. No no exploding heads. No, no Fist of the North Star Germany edition. Ah, uh, shame. Sadly. Pass. <laughs> Next. That's not my style. Um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a hard thing to watch. I found because, uh, yeah, personal demons to deal with, and you just can see from the outside but cannot help. You never see it from her perspective, is very hard. And in the at the core of it is a family drama essentially of a family not being supportive and quite abusive and yeah it's a, it's a tough thing to watch but really really liked it and surprisingly it was on youtube with english subtitles the english subtitles were bad but uh, th there's one way to watch it because i didn't find a single streaming thing please wh why don't you take my money i would i would gladly give it God damn it, G give me official releases. Uh, I just want to point out something real quick. Like, I entered Requiem in a uh, letterbox search box, and the f fir f I did the exact first thing that then. came up is a movie called Anal Sanctuary, which. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to mention that. I, th I think it's a hen hentai. <laughs> Apparently, the original title is I Requiem. So. Why the realize. fuck did that come up first? Why is why are they on letterbox? <laughs> just a better question. That too, but oh, it's high. Have art. more people watched it than Requiem? I think so. Two people oh. have seen it, so I'm not quite sure why. Uh, Anal Sanctuary, powerful title, right there. Or well, lays out lays out what what you should expect, really. Yeah, did you get exactly what it says on the tin? Well, the original title is Requiem, so <laughs> I don't know. We'll I have to watch what it to for the expect. next horror cast. There's only one way to find out. I can watch one of these two Requiem movies and I've made my decision. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next time. I'm going to give a long form review on Anal Sanctuary. We could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. It's doable. That's probably the next step. There's you only one to... place to go. Inflation fetish. Hentai oh. reviews. Should I tell the story of how I uh, saw Magical Girl Elena? Oh yeah, <laughs> apparently that's <laughs> like also real hentai. crazy. Yeah, the, I think we still need to do that. Uh, that we basically every one of us watches an anime with our names in it, and I will probably have to pick uh, Magical Girl Elena. But yeah, that was a hentai, and it has like a very specific set of fetishes. I feel. Uh, that being in included sure to, uh, to, to, to have uh, sex as a magical girl uh, with a wolf that also is an impregnation mm -hmm. fetish. Uh, and I quote, uh, no, or else I w will have wolf babies in me. Uh, I think mm -hmm. this is where I stopped watching. That was the first episode out of three. Is this does, About 20 minutes does in. Does this overlap with your fetishes? <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at my fetish list. One moment. W, Wolf, uh... No. No, Ellen is after tiger babies with Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to roll for this guy in Fire Emblem Heroes for two weeks straight. And he showed up on the last day with six hours on the clock to go. 
I have gotten my tiger man's Mordecai and I will defend him to my death. <laughs> he is mine now. I have big tiger man's and I have declared him my personal unit. He's mine now. That's dangerously <laughs> furry, but okay. <laughs> He's like a, a big dude with a blue beard and, and, and blue tiger ears. And he has little squirrels running around him. I don't know how much furry that is. That's like several furry creatures right there. That's true. <laughs> it's a unit of, of three units. Big Daggermans and two squirrels. How did um, we get here? <laughs> we got here from Anal Sanctuary, but that's... Uh, oh, yeah. Not, not relevant. Ali, uh, <laughs> uh, what did you watch? Get, get us out of here. Uh, I've seen quite a bit actually recently. Um, I guess a, a more niche film that people probably wouldn't know is um, this British horror film from late eighties. So this is like post Hammer, after the kind of popular mainstream horror aesthetic moved away from like gothic villains and into slasher and splatter flicks, like. The British uh, horror cinema movement kind of became really lo-fi and really super low-budget movies. And there's this movie called Unmasked Part 25, which is like a spoof of slasher movies, um, particularly Friday the 13th, um, about um, a slasher villain who decides that um, his life is more than, than killing people. Um, and falls in love with someone he was about to murder, and it's a really bizarre oh. film about their love life. <laughs> it's <laughs> um, it's a film, um, like, like the, it opens with very typical low budget um, like slasher kills, um, really gruesome, and then she um, the the killer meets a blind woman who um, doesn't realize who he is. And things happen, and they fall in love, and it's such a bizarre film where he has to like, like decide what his purpose in life is, whether he should be a monstrous killer because that's what his trope is, or like live a normal life, even though he's like this this very stereotypical, horrifically disfigured horror villain. Like because he's disfigured, he has to be this this mindless killer, and he's got like like dad problems. Like, <laughs> It's, so it's it's, but it, it's also Phantom like of the Opera cranked up. Yeah, yeah, kind of like there's there's this scene where he's he's in like a very like classic British pub, and there are people like like he walks into the pub and like there are like this this rowdy group, and they they drag him onto it the table and like they're sure he's just like a a film star, <laughs> and they start interrogating <laughs> him about like um like what it's like being a film star and they're all smitten with him and they want his autograph meanwhile he's like having a like existential crisis <laughs> like <laughs> trying to deal with what his life is and then like that scene ends up in a bar brawl um and those characters come back later to eventually be killed and like it's it's a film like <laughs> <laughs> but then it the other thing to mention is like incredibly like low budget it, it's it shot on vhs really poor quality audio and and visuals um which is part of the charm but like especially given this came out in 1989 so like horror films were looking very very polished even if they were trashy they were looking more polished at this point it's it's <laughs> definitely something that, not something that would have ever had commercial appeal it it it, it's aimed at people who were seeking out horror VHSs around the kind of like video nasty era where things were banned. So like people craving that type of horror, I guess. Ah, uh, nice. I think uh, I really like this this idea of uh, this it's direct to video horror mm -hmm. uh, because you can basically do whatever you want because you don't have to pass like film or TV regulations. Well, I mean that is... was that was the issue in in it's like here in in that era that like these films were being released and the like film code, um, like treated like 
um, especially like Italian horror or in quite a few American horror films, like um, Evil Dead and Texas Chainsaw are good examples. Um, they were just like seen as disgusting films. Like the the government at the time were just like, no, you can't have these films. These films are immoral. They're they're gonna like cause um, rampant crime problems among the youth. <laughs> like oh, yeah. they were banned, and there's this big movement of um, like horror filmmakers and distributors and fans like pushing back at it and um like getting these films recognized that yeah they're not yeah they're they're very excessive um Mm -hmm. but they're they're just films and like there were there were always the claims of and like some of them i can understand why it'd be contested but like um the films like cannibal holocaust where it's it's savages and they're in these kind of exotic places like the the claim was well one of the claims was that like people were actually being killed to make these movies which was completely mm-hmm. unfounded but like <laughs> if you watch them they're so <laughs> like graphic that you can see why they would think that yeah but it really came out of this very prudish um <laughs> like tory uh, mindset of of traditionalism but that's a whole okay. that's a whole era but yeah like so many films came out of that as a pushback and Films like Unmasked were one of them. I'm pretty sure this wasn't on the the list of films that were banned. I think this was probably like too underground at the time for it. I think I can probably make it a parallel here to to Germany as well because uh, films can go on on a on a banned list, which is just called the index. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> as long it's on there, you, you you can't even mention the film publicly like uh, it's forbidden to say the the, the film title uh, same goes for um, games as well um, that they can be put on the index but I think in some cases it means they cannot be distributed but in other cases it means they cannot be advertised openly that means you have to mm-hmm. go to the store and ask for the film they can sort of hand it over to you under the counter um, mm-hmm. Which is of course not good for like revenue and stuff because people have to know about it, but as you cannot publicly mention it, uh, it gets really hard to get. Uh, is that still a thing? That's, but the problem that's happening because I'm often seeing like I think they have seeing like releases of horror movies where they're advertised like on the Blu-ray cover as finally off the index, like that 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 yeah that, yeah, that seems to happen a lot now. Soft, thankfully. So I wasn't sure if that's still a thing they yeah, do. Uh, I think in extreme cases, but uh, yeah, the, thankfully we've entered an era now where people can, uh, when uh, where films can get off the index again, uh, and that happened with Battle Royale last year, where um, we finally got like a very fancy Blu-ray release. It says like finally off the index and completely new with a new German dub and everything. So. Uh, thankfully, like uh, a lot of that era is now over. I think for um, now that you mentioned it, I think music still can get on the index, uh, which happened to Rammstein's last album, oh, uh, Liebes for Adada, which um, that it was put on the index and then it was taken off the index, but with one song censored and then completely off the index again. But I knew. Um, that it, uh, and for the photos that were in it, that's that was the thing. It was the cover artwork, the uh, artwork within the album, and one song, and then through the whole album on the sensor list, and then off again. But that was like two thousand fourteen or something. It's fairly recent. Huh. I'm looking at like films and stuff that are banned in New Zealand, and a lot of them have been lifted up, or some of them are pretty understandable. But the most recent one in 2014 was High School DxD. <laughs> <laughs> no lootery in this country. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 2012, a Serbian film. 2014, High School DxD. Two very yeah. similar pieces, right there. Yeah. So, would would anal sanctuary be banned in New Zealand? No, but some other thing that looks vaguely like hentai is also banned. So, um, I'm going through my like letterbox diary of the last two months, and I'm trying to to come up with a movie 
that I want to recommend, like a horror movie, but something that's a little less known, I guess. I mean, there is some stuff that I liked, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, but I think people in, in, who are familiar with the genre know about this one already. <laughs> I know Ellie likes it as well. Um, so... Oh, it's getting a, a re-release uh, in the cinema, I think an event release in Germany where I'm going to watch it, I think, end of May or something. You should do that. Uh, so I'm going to go with it. Just go for it. Um, yeah, two movies that are a little bit less known, I guess, is uh, one is Amsterdam. Uh, big, oh, yeah. Big <laughs> That's a good title. title. Uh, it might be well known in, like, well, the Netherlands and Germany because... Uh, Blu-ray I had definitely had like a, a German dub and it seemed like one of those older ones that they would show on TV um, that's a, a very charming movie that's like the main main thing I can use to describe it the word charming because it's like th- this uh, slasher movie set in Amsterdam it's not not even that much of a horror movie it's kind of like more procedural like a uh, police procedural but it, it tries it tries very hard it tries very hard to be entertaining and it has some standout scenes it has an extended uh, speedboat chase scene through the canals of Amsterdam in a slasher movie and it's great <laughs> Damn. the, bo- the bo- boat <laughs> Get it. That boats go fast and they do the big jumps over bridges and whatnot. You got, you got, that's, that's one way to chase the killer in a horror movie <laughs> uh, I, I got this one for like also like discount blu-ray for five euros or whatever it was so pretty good deal um, the other movie nice. that I saw that I really liked was uh, a movie version of a Tales from the Crypt thing uh, called Demon Knight mm-hmm. apparently oh. this one had like a cinema release like they made a standalone movie for Tales of, from the Crypt I don't really know why I never see this one discussed because it's like a popular franchise and the movie has some good ass production value to it so I, I just don't see mm-hmm. it come up often in like horror mm-hmm. movie discussions and um, this is some fun shit uh, it's about a man on the run from a demon and he hides out in like a hotel and there's like a bunch of regular people who who like in the in the hotel or like boarding house or whatever it is and they don't know what the fuck's going on and now there's a demon and his like minions attacking this house and they have to survive the night demon is played by (laughs) billy zane who actually does a fucking great job hammering it up and whatnot uh (laughs) jada pinkett smith is in this one and it also has some fucking fantastic special effects like it's it's, it's great stuff this is that should be considered in like the the higher echelon of horror movie practical effects and whatnot um looks pretty great for yeah mid 90s movie um yeah i don't know i don't i'm just kind of baffled that it's something that i've heard of like once in like a twitter thread and that's how I got pointed towards it and then never again or before mm. it's a uh, yeah tales from the crypt demon knight is uh, the name of it check that one out and it has uh, has a blu-ray release as well in germany which i don't i don't have yet but i'm going to get it eventually do not ask how i watch this movie the me- the, the means were <laughs> maybe not legal or maybe they are who knows <laughs> So, yeah, those are the two I'm going to throw out real quick. Slightly lesser known, I guess. Maybe. It depends on your region. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, I guess as we're talking about films, I'll mention Theatre of Blood, um, mm-hmm. which is a Vincent Price film, or like starring Vincent Price, um, which is like a revenge slasher film um, about a Shakespearean actor who is slated by critics. And like, um, the time comes to offer a, like give the award for the best Shakespearean actor of that year, and um, Vincent Price's character is like so certain he's going to win it because he's such a great Shakespearean actor, and he's snubbed by everyone, all of the critics, and 
um, he ends up dying, um, but then comes back to life to kill all of the critics who slated him. Um, yeah. And he kills them all in like the style of a Shakespearean play. Like one of the um, one of the critics, um, what is it? Like um, there's this, this very um, like uh, tip, like stereotypical gay critic who has these two dogs, and um, his dogs oh, yeah, are baked into a pie, and he's force fed them, um, which is kind of grotesque. Um, oh they're, yeah, they're, but which one is that? Uh, that's um. They're, they're... Uh, I can't uh, remember. I'm really it's one of it. the lesser Shakespeare ones. Where, where the, it, it's uh, the, the most extreme of the Shakespeare plays, I think it's, it's fair to say. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's, I think somebody bakes someone's son or daughter into a pie and the king has to eat it. Titus Andronicus. Titus Andronicus. There we go. Um, yeah, so like the kills are all like that. Um, like, some, some are more more simple, like, um, one of the critics finds his wife cheating on him, um, like, uh, one critic is killed by a mob of homeless people, which is like, um, in Julius Caesar, uh, or oh, like, yeah. it's like, it, that's the allusion to, um, one guy is, um, like, beheaded in his sleep, uh, which is really quite a grotesque but also like really absurd scene where the where vincent price is dressed, dressed up as a doctor and he's got this sidekick with him dressed as like a, a nurse <laughs> and like they're <laughs> beheading this man as he sleeps um and uh, there's another really bizarre one i'm trying to remember now um oh yeah someone someone's drowned in a bot like a barrel of wine um one man is dragged his body is dragged by a horse like across <laughs> um across like this country lane <laughs> which is also pretty grotesque um but yeah so it's a really like um really bizarre film but it's definitely worth watching um, i don't think i've ever seen it mentioned in conversations especially vincent bryce being this very big um icon of classic british cin- uh, horror cinema but like mm. yeah it's definitely worth seeking out pretty okay. sure it has. i think i watched the first 10 minutes but yeah. uh, I wanted to then find a subtitled version because I think mine just ha- didn't have good audio. Or I had a lot of trouble understanding uh, the actors. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I saw only the beginning. And the, it's uh, Vincent Price hemming it up to Shakespeare. Yes, is It's just ah, mwah, beautiful. I, I really like all the critics sort of begging him. Like not to kill them by like saying, "Oh yeah, I, I always praised you." And meanwhile, it's like a flat out lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's definitely one of the more unique um, kind of revenge flicks I've seen. Also, the poster's really good. That we'll have to get up on screen. Oh yeah, I'm just remembering. Um, if we're talking UK uh, horror, um, I could probably throw one out. Uh, Peeping Tom. Oh yeah, from yeah. 1960s, I think, um, because I remember that uh, in my horror film seminar, um, the film bombed back in the day uh, because <laughs> yeah. the idea of having a, a a bad human as a monster uh, wasn't really liked. Who maybe even has slip psychological problems, mm-hmm. and then just a few years later, a little known film called Psycho came around yeah. and everybody loved it. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of proto-psycho in that way. Exactly. It's um, a voyeur, like somebody who gets off on seeing people uh, like tortured and die with his camera. And it is like a very unique like killing thing. Like he has a tripod with a knife and a camera so he can basically do his own snuff films. And yeah, it's a, it's a very out there... But very, very good, intense, um, like through the horror that I can really recommend for, as you said, like one proto psycho, uh, like before it became like sort of a theme in horror film. Now, Tom, do you um, one? Honestly, no. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the horror baby. I, c- I could not watch horror movies for the longest time. And now that I can, uh, I still, I'm still well behind the times. So I've got a huge list of recommendations from today <laughs> that I'll be probably going <laughs> through, uh, as well as some other things that I know I want to watch. 
in the future for the next cast. I was going to watch Christine, which probably isn't quite so underground, but it's still, I it's guess, still not, must watch. The, yeah, it's still not the super popular ones. But yeah. I haven't seen it either. Okay. You, you gotta rewatch Faust, Loved, or The Damned. I'm Every sure day. I'll rewatch it at some point. I think I need to. Gather some friends and some <laughs> yeah. alcohol and go wild. Yeah, it's perfect for that. Oh yeah, we, we haven't uh, answered the question yet. Is Faust Tokusatsu? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. We have a best on Tokusatsu, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Is Faust part of the MCU? I, I wish. Should be. Should be. Yes. <laughs> should She should be. I know there is a comic. I don't know exactly who published it. But <laughs> is it official? <laughs> I mean, like... I'm sure Marvel owns... Disney owns everything now. Like They could probably get the rights. Oh, I'm sure. This comic oh, I'm sure they're negotiating for it. Three people, like, remember. Fiercely. <laughs> when are you going to be drawing your Faust fan art, Boris? Soon. Soon enough. There's just so much to choose from in the movie. I, I don't know where to start. So many The scene where he awkwardly <laughs> licks his blades while crouching next to a stone gargoyle. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna make uh, fan art of the smooth man. Was that what it was called? The fucking... <laughs> the faceless... Yeah, the smooth, the smooth man. man. <laughs> I would personally go for a stomach snake. Oh, yeah. I don't know. So somebody gets cut open and then a just huge boar constrictor comes out. It's supposed to be horrifying, but the problem is it just has such a friendly face. Because it's and then a one snake. man eats some holes like a big <laughs> it's old just noodle. Just behold. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, slurps it up. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fuck off now. Do you guys wanna keep discussing or uh, an hour and 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 sixteen minutes? I think that'd probably be alright. We've we've talked quite a lot. We can do another one of these. Oh, yeah, sure. We'll... Yeah. I'm sure we're gonna watch more horror movies. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that was our little uh, horror uh, recommendation and discussion round. Um. Yeah, I think we're going to do uh, some more because uh, there's just a, a whole plethora of new ones coming out as well as just digging out old stuff. Uh, that is good. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this has been the usual round. Uh, that was Ellie. Bye-bye. Uh, Boris. Uh, watch Faust and bye. <laughs> and Tom. Sorry for having very little input. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> Absolutely no problem. And me, Elena. So uh, have a lot of fun. Enjoy all your horror films. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.